Hello everyone, welcome to this week's uh, Learn and Move from Pro section. Uh, in today's section, uh, we I've, I've actually found a very interesting game uh, between two European professionals. So the black player is Matthew Surma. He's from Poland and he is a professional Go player. His opponent, the white zone player, Alexander, uh, and I have problems pronouncing his uh, middle name as well as last name, so I'm not going to do that here. So Alexander from Russia, also a very uh, well-known uh, professional uh, Go game in the European Go community. Uh, and yeah, it's super interesting to talk about a game between two European players, uh, because most of my videos have been about uh, Asian professional uh, players. So let's take a look at what happened in this interesting game. So Matthew starts as black. Uh, Alexander doesn't even care about the empty corner and just goes ahead and approach. So very, already we can see Alexander is a very creative, a very daring uh, player. Um, and his games are definitely very fun to watch. So black decides to ignore. Uh, and White says, well, if you ignore, I will punish you locally. So this is uh, uh, looking for a complication, right? Alexander is looking for complication. He could have done something uh, like this one, which is simpler to manage. But instead, uh, he goes ahead and uh, played a complicated variation. He's expecting Black to attach so he can uh, enter into this super uh, complicated uh variation uh, that is a headache for uh, most players so this is the main line and the fight will uh, keep going from here uh, really you need a lot of strength to go into this fight so Matthews decided that well if Alexander plays this is probably prepared so he decides to avoid the complication uh, and this is an excellent uh, Joseki for you to avoid uh, the complication so uh, both play, both players keeps going and we reach uh, this position. White obviously needs to extend this out. Black goes ahead and plays somewhere else. White turns looking for the weakness at Q2. Black needs to fix it by capturing uh, the stone. Uh, so White decides to still not t take the <laughs> the remaining empty corner but just constantly approaching and uh, keep pressure uh, on to black. Um, black decides the tanuki again and white decides approach, black defends and white plays the kima and black attach and we have this uh, continuation. So black gets a good moyo over here, and black is sorry. White gets a good moyo over here, and black is super fast uh, in terms of territory. Right, he's pretty much got all four corners, but Alexander doesn't really care. Uh, he just uh, he just plays like that. So another high approach, super liberal, super uh, fun to watch. Um, black defense. Uh, here I would probably be more interested in defending this way, but uh, since this game was played, uh, I believe in 2015, so that's when AI did not come out. So uh, the games were more interesting in in those times. Um, and now we're today's uh, move. So uh, obviously White has a lot of choices. He can go ahead and attach and settle the corner. He can attach the other corner and settle. Uh, his stone at d15. Those are all very good variations. But Alexander decides to punish uh, Black's corner uh, over here. So um, if I was going to play white locally, I used to play a lot b5. Uh, and I realized later on that when Black blocks, there's really not a good follow up, right? If you try to enclose Black and destroy your shape by playing uh, the d4. So um, this is really a move that makes you comfortable at first, but doesn't really do anything practically. So my personal recommendation for all my viewers is actually to jump uh, at b6. This is not what is played in the game, but uh, I would say uh, B6 is a definitely a great move to play locally. Uh, it um, strengthens the side 
as well as a pressures the corner. Uh, so a black correct response. So uh, if black is not so good at life and death, he's probably gonna kick you and uh, you know, and this is uh, gonna be uh, this is gonna be very good for white because we got what we want in sente, so we can take initiative elsewhere. But uh, but as it turns out that. Uh, black doesn't have to. So when you try uh, to come in and uh, try to uh, basically uh, kill black, uh, what's going to happen is that black can uh, defend himself uh, like this. So uh, white uh, pretty much has to. Uh, white, white gets a lot of comfortable moves, but white pretty much has to uh, let black live. Uh, so as we can see, black white got enclosure outside, white got extension that strengthened his sight. Uh, so very good outcome locally for black. Um, extremely good for, for white, but the thing is that uh, black uh, got a lot of moves outside. So uh, does that compensate for what black lost locally? Well, that's it. That is a, a tough uh, call. That is that is hard to judge. So, but that's that's a, a very good continuation uh, from both sides. Uh, Black and Tanuki just because of uh, the life and death situation uh, inside the corner. So, uh, not what is played in the game. So let's look at what move we're gonna learn uh, from the game. Uh, that is what Alexander played. That is to. Uh, go ahead and go to 2-2. Two, two. Well, super, super cool looking move. I was very, very shocked uh, visually by this move, which is why I choose to talk about this one in this section. Um, so it's visually pleasing. So let's look at what are some tactical continuations. If black kicks, white will follow up by Akima here. Now black needs to fix the corner, right? If white ever gets to extend at c2, black is in big trouble. So he goes ahead and uh, fix that. And now white got what he wants. He got a sente and he can start developing uh, on the side. He can start playing somewhere else. So by playing the b2, exchanging with the b3, suddenly uh, our b5 looks a lot stronger. The weakness look a lot uh, less less obvious uh, and we got a sente so this is super good outcome for white uh, locally what if black defends over here uh, if a black defends like this uh, white can now jump uh, so that's the same idea so black needs to fix is if he plays somewhere else white can follow up by playing this variation uh, black cannot make a life locally uh, he needs to fight a very awful co, uh, very likely. But if black fix, white gains initiative and got the b6 in sente, and then he can play somewhere else. That's super good for white as well. So uh, you can test this out uh, in your game against your opponent, and this is going to be uh, very, very... Uh, it's it's a test that is super hard to pass for your opponent for sure. Um, so the correct move is for Black to uh, play this one. This is what Matthews uh, played in the game. Uh, White needs to block this potential to come out, and now Black goes back and fix his weakness at a B3, uh, and the game is gonna move on from here. So as we can see, White got this B6. It was a gote, but he got incente, and he can uh, go ahead and uh, start playing uh, elsewhere on the board. So White achieved his goal by uh, sacrificing a little bit profits in the corner. Uh, so uh, an excellent idea, I would say a very creative idea by Alexander. Uh, it's not necessarily better than uh, if just or White simply jumps, but definitely. Uh, very, very, uh, I chose this move because of its creativity uh, and uh, that's really, really something that, that we encourage in the game of Go that is create new moves, uh, create new ideas uh, and this turns out to be not so bad, right? Like we got in this position, White gets to play somewhere else. So excellent move that you can learn from Alexander. All right, so this is uh, 
today's content. So if you liked the video, give a thumb up. If you have any questions, uh, comment below the video and I'll answer them. And sub subscribe to my channel to get the latest update on the new videos. Uh, I have the new Joseki series that came out. So if you haven't noticed, uh, if you want to get those, you know, strengthen your Joseki knowledge, uh, subscribe to my channel to get uh, the latest uh, videos. All right. Thank you for watching and I will talk to you guys next time.